Good morning! Nice of you guys to drop by! It's a Han Solo quote from the Empire Strikes Back. What? Welcome back, everybody. This is the Empire Strikes Back. No, it's not. This is where, yeah, we're just going to read the script for the Empire Strikes Back. <clears throat> I think one of my favorites is still, good to see you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tasu Leech. Good, good to, to see, see you. you. That is such a um, Han Solo thing. Yeah, that, and you know what's funny? That, that is almost... By the way, welcome everybody to the Resistance broadcast. <laughs> yeah, sorry, right side pod. note. <laughs> I'm John I'm John. <laughs> I'm John Hoey. That's James Bainey. That's Lacey Gillerin. That quote, now that you say that, the good to see you, that's almost the exact same tonation and delivery as Billy Madison when Carl walks in on yes. him trying to... And he goes, good Carl, to see you. good to see you. Yeah. It's like yeah. the same exact thing. So Han Solo ripped off Billy Madison. Uh, I think that's just how Harrison Ford is with everyone. <laughs> oh, great to see you. <laughs> like he wasn't acting. Uh, hashtag make Billy Madison happen. Um, <laughs> so, so, <laughs> because it already did. Um, all right, everybody, <laughs> we're glad you're here to talk uh, with us about what well, we're going to talk. You're going to listen, I guess, or watch. Um, but uh, we, yeah, we have a lot to get into today in terms of Star Wars news and our takes on it. There's not a ton of news, but there is some cool stuff to talk about. And before we get into the news, uh, the moment has finally happened. Hasbro, uh, we don't have to talk about are they going to do it because they did it. Lacey, what did they do? Everyone knows. But I thought ahead. you were going to say Lacey can shut up now. <laughs> have your moment. <laughs> no. Yeah, this is your this is your moment. Then then it's done. I feel then like Kelly done. Clarkson should be playing right now moment like this <laughs> i was talking about uh, jesse and kelly gone. today oh really interesting that's all <laughs> that's that's such a throwback Justin that's all <laughs> um a am i pumped yes absolutely so <laughs> full disclosure i got the, the covid vaccine second dose it didn't go so well. I like passed out for like eight hours and then I woke up to that news. So I feel like I time traveled kind of mm. to it happening. Mm. But yes, I am super, super excited it happened. I, I knew it was there was a reason it was taking a while. And I kept saying that I was pretty understanding that, like, look, it's a tough lightsaber because it has that spin ignition, which is. Everyone kept saying online, like, oh, my God, does it do that? And I'm like, yes, it does. And not only does it yeah. do that, it turns green and then blue and then yellow or blue, then yep. green, then yellow. That was a really cool detail that I that I like. Oh, that my added. gosh. It is better than I could have imagined it. And I have the Galaxy's Edge one. And look, that one's great. Um, this one is incredible. And I love that you could take the blade off. I know you could take the Galaxy's Edge blade off, too, but um I the one little nitpick I have is the detailing uh -oh. on <laughs> the hilt, like the leather straps that go around it. The one on the Galaxy's Edge blade looks better. But Ooh. besides that, like that's something you could fix on your own or like add your own thing. Um, other than that, the fact that they said that it uses sounds that were for the movie that didn't even get used in the movie. Uh oh. That's so epic. And John pointed it out on Twitter, and they also said it in the live stream. It is the first item that says Ray Skywalker on it. Yes. Which is very cool. And I know that there were some critiques being like, oh, it took two years. Trust me, they've never done anything like this before. And clearly Disney pushed theirs out before this, being like, yeah, we don't need the spin ignition. But I think you do. And it's so cool. So thank you for everybody for tweeting at me and tagging me and stuff. It Yes, I was freaking out with you. And... Hopefully, by the time you hear this, I have one. I like when yeah. you called it Switch Ignition, because it reminds me of a Thrice song, Phoenix Ignition. Because I keep wanting to say, like, a Fee Switch Ignition. <laughs> it's anybody, super Thrice cool. fans the, out there. I was pumped when they showed it, like, that they were, like, that was the first thing they showed. And I was like, yes, this is why it took a while. This well, is what they were trying to figure out. I think it's that, plus also, um, I would put money on it that this was not revealed to Hasbro until after the movie came out. Yes. So yes. they were definitely behind the eight ball because if you show them They didn't know Luke Skywalker, they didn't know Grogu, they didn't they don't know things. Right. Over so there. so yeah. if you yeah, if you show someone at Hasbro and we know how like leaks go around these days, whether it's people who do artwork or people who do marketing yeah. or people who yeah. do whatever, you show them this is Ray's new lightsaber and it's Ray Skywalker, that is that's dangerous and jj probably knew it uh they probably asked disney like you know you're probably gonna take this on the chin for a year without being able to sell these but 
we really want to preserve this. And they granted it just like Favreau got the Grogu, secrecy yeah. Grogu, like you said. So I think that's a part of it. And then what you just said, too, about the mechanics of it. Clearly, the Galaxy's Edge one came out a little before. That one's a little easier to function. This was probably a harder thing. It has for them like to a do, weird it, switch. It's like. But they knew they, they had e to. Yeah, they didn't even build it in like to where you see the other lightsabers. The switch is the actual switch on the lightsaber. This is like yeah. a little tiny switch on the back that looks so out of place that they were like, well, we're just not going to do it. So we'll just add this little switch here that mm. you're going to ignore. And I remember yeah. being kind of like, oh, <laughs> like the coolest thing about it is that she spins it to turn it on. So right. when they did that for this, I was just so ecstatic. I'm so pumped. So thank you, Hasbro, for like somewhat ignoring my pleas but then like also kind of listening to them because I mean, every time it. i interviewed you <laughs> i brought it up I, i'm not saying we're going to see this i mean i i, I do think we're going to see more of ray in the future without question but that ignition alone the switch adds an opportunity that past lightsabers haven't given you which is showing right. this the physical motion of something turning on where she could turn it on using the force and we could slowly see the button triggering over whereas the other lightsaber luke would just hit the thing which is like a like a like a thumb pad right we saw it on. with ben solo in last jedi when he switches it on but it's still not as cool as it's spinning wait are they not switches no they're like buttons he hits the button and it turns on it's not like a flip up thing i thought it's Luke's a flip, was up. A flip up no no, no. it's a flip up it's Wh a slide. which one are we talking it's about slides luke's it slides which was which was Ray's. It slides. That's, that slides. That's not the button. That's uh, not on, the, on the toy, but on the, in the movie, he just hits the thing like a thumb pad. I oh, I wouldn't oh. even. I never even thought about that. On Is the that, toy, it definitely slides. Yeah, I think that's just the technology. Oh. Yeah, because even the prequel lightsabers was like a, just a red button and you go bink. I'd like have that. to go look that up. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, it's got to be in one of those visual dictionaries to confirm this. Regardless, this is the coolest turn on. Yeah. <laughs> of a um, lightsaber we're just going to say that i th i thought i saw somewhere about the 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 handle that it will wear over time was what it will yeah they claimed that it will but the one for galaxy's edge came kind of like pre-worn and like just the fabric is a little different on the one yeah. for galaxy's edge i guess i was just thinking like me i don't know if that is like a better thing like they were like okay well we pre-worn this like like we ripped the holes in the jeans for you, and that's the Galaxy's right. Edge one. But the other one yeah, is like, well, right, we didn't right. we didn't put holes in it, but it will get that way if you if you hold it and continue to use it. You know, it, I'm gonna it, knock Kylo over. Oh God, that's how we intended yeah. it to be. So I don't know. Maybe there was some intention behind that. I'm actually I'm so I'm it a little looks more surprised. worn on the Galaxy's Edge one. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Whereas theirs is like dark, light, lightest. Does Ray's does Ray's in the movie have that sticker on it about like the batteries and stuff? Oh, <laughs> oh well, here's the switch. <laughs> Look how dumb this switch is. This little switch right here. Is yeah, what? that's an odd place for it too. Oh, I guess my batteries the, are mm. dead. <laughs> yeah, the Galaxy's Edge ones are weird. We talked about this a long time ago. They drain batteries when they're off. Oh, it's dead. Oh, wow. They train, but they train mm. the battery when it's off, and I, I'm not exactly How sure. How dare you? <laughs> Why don't you tra tra Do you have another lightsaber in the room? You could transfer its force energy over to that lightsaber. I have mm -hmm. the two FX ones. I really like the Hasbro ones. I know people are really into the Galaxy's mm -hmm. Edge ones because they're connected look, to the park the and that Hasbro experience. ones are more experience, uh, more expensive uh, too. I've had my Darth Vader one for like 16 years, and it still works perfect and everything. So yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. Enough about that. We're going to talk more about Hasbro later uh, in our open chat, what else they revealed and stuff. Um, Lacey probably knows a bit more than uh, James and I about that stuff, I would assume. But anyway, uh, let's get into our new stories, and uh, James is going to take us through. It's the resistance. Well, a little bit. <clears throat> of a look behind the scenes uh, via Bess Bestman Bulletin this week. Um, we got a little bit of a report about the Obi-Wan Kenobi set and how it might involve a pool <laughs> and Darth Vader. <laughs> it's kind of kind of funny to think about. It's like Weekend at Vader's or something like that. But 
supposedly the story goes is that there was a college campus that needed to be um, kind of evacuated. They said, you know, no only crew and other things like that. And there's a couple signs and you can see the signs on StarWarsNewsNet.com uh, that say to set and they're labeled with a J and a T, which is Joshua Tree, which is the production title for Kenobi. Um, so we obviously know that they were there. They were involved. The story goes that they were using a large swimming pool and they had blue screens all around it. Um, and that Darth Vader was involved in some way or another. And then the other interesting thing is that uh, the sh- the production as of now, uh, Bestman Bullen is saying it's wrapped and that they had been working chronologically. So whatever this scene is, is likely to be near the end. Um, as they were saying, whoever did see Darth Vader on set kind of seemed like it was an intense scene. It's kind of all um, hearsay based on this report. Uh, but yeah, just dry dry ice and other effects were used to create a miss effect that was similar to Dagobah. I know they said it's not Dagobah or it was not reported that it was Dagobah. It was just supposed to be like a vibe. But that is a, that I, as far as I could tell, that's about the, the main points of this report. Kind of interesting as we get closer to Kenobi. I want to ask John what he thought of this and uh, how are you putting all the pieces together? Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I mean, seeing the signs there uh, as we added into our article adds uh, validity to the location, uh, makes plenty of sense. Um, I'm not sure about the filming in chronological order. I don't know if that's a Deborah Chow thing or or mm-hmm. what. I, I can't speak to that. What I do find interesting is, uh, and Bestman Bolton made a point of this in in their article, that for The Empire Strikes Back in Dagobah, the dragon snake scene in that misty bog swamp was filmed in using George Lucas's personal pool. Uh, so they may have borrowed a little page out of his book saying like, Hey, you know, we don't have to recreate this whole giant water set in Manhattan studios by the volume. We can literally rent out a pool for a day, get the dry ice in there, get the lighting right and get the shots the way we need it that way. It's very possible. They did that. And it's a lot cheaper than building this whole construct and waterproofing walls and building a pool and i mean that's uh, a big undertaking for something that may be just a small scene so what does trigger something in my mind though about this dagobah thing is you know we've been talking about like it'd be pretty cool if obi-wan went to go visit yoda and it would make a lot of sense if he does that because it's a way for him to leave the planet without going somewhere big in public where he can be seen by people um, and then also at the same time you get Yoda in there, which is always a good thing. Hopefully Frank Oz involved, as we said last week, even though he's a little bitter towards Disney, but the Muppets still has been very involved in Star Wars. The other thing that I find very interesting is there's a scene in The Empire Strikes Back or a line um, where Luke's about to enter this cave where he confronts Darth Vader in there, right? In his like little vision and they fight. And Yoda says, a remainder of evil it is. I think Darth Vader is going to Dagobah in Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I think it's possible that uh, something happens and that's the remainder of evil that's left in that cave. And then that's why when Luke goes in there and Empire Strikes Back, he sees his father. Funny, I was going to ask you guys if you thought that was the case, because what would that mean for the movies then? That he was there, that he confronted Yoda, that he knew where Yoda was. That's what that's what I'm curious of what they're gonna do. I think that'd be very interesting. Now, full disclosure, on Thursday, we're gonna have a discussion, kind of a what if, because that's been like the fun thing with the Marvel stuff right. going on lately. And people have been talking about Star Wars, like what if. So on Thursday, our main discussion is gonna be what if Yoda and Darth Vader had fought with the lightsaber in a lightsaber duel? How would that go? Who would win? So we're gonna get into more of that on our speculation on it just how makes that fight me wonder, would go would he leave him there There's you that. know vader doesn't seem like someone that would be like yeah he's good over here yeah i mean i i mean it's just it would be that would be a cool tie-in because i've always wondered what happened in that cave where yoda obviously experienced something to the point where he said he doesn't say you know the dark side lurks there he says it's a, a remainder of evil it is so mm. something like a presence came and and left are a, you sure a, that's the line evil, I think so. Because I was like, I'd never heard that. I, I, that doesn't stick out to me. And I'm looking here. It says that place is strong with the dark side of the force. A domain of evil it is. 
Oh, does it say a domain of evil? Maybe that's what it is. Oh, no. I mean, it could still stand it, true it, with what he's saying. Yeah. Domain yeah. remains same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, either way, like, what was there that Yoda knows that was evil, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, that's interesting to me, and the fact they're doing a similar way of filming this bog or swamp or whatever they're doing. So I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying I think that that's definite. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool. And if they're saying, you know, Vader's entering a forest and they said it could look Dagobah-y, uh, it's all very interesting. And again, I love that I don't know. Um, or it could uh, be a vision it, for Kenobi. Yeah. yeah, it could be a vision yeah. too. Maybe Obi-Wan or Yoda goes into the cave and experiences the same thing Luke does. We don't know. Right. So maybe right. he needs to stay at a hotel and they have a, a heat a heated pool, you know? A heated pool, <laughs> yeah, and then he, he it's says, on the table. Of, it's very, it's I, I didn't I did I haven't learned how to become one with the force, but I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. Yes. So oh, Yeah, geez. exactly. <laughs> um yeah, so I don't know. Either way, I think it's cool that um that the, that we're getting these little bits and stuff and even our mm-hmm. reports, but we don't know uh nothing too spoilery it's just stuff to like really get the appetite going right and uh, it's exciting I'm, I'm really looking forward to this the more and more stuff i hear about this series and the fact that they're coming close they're to wrapping it's not it. wrapped it's very cool yeah they're going bananas yeah Lacey, did you have any other thoughts as far as the photos and and what we're looking at here so it's funny that john brought up the george lucas shooting in his pool because the first thing i thought of actually was i recently watched that netflix special about like movies like how the movies that made us or whatever it is and they yeah. talked about home alone how they shot the whole wet bandits like house scene in a pool like they literally built a house inside of a high school pool <laughs> uh, did they yeah the whole scene wow. where they flood the house that's all a, that's a fake house inside of a pool inside of a high school um nice. But that's the kind of stuff that, like, I hear it and I'm like, that is so cool. That is so awesome. So mm-hmm. when I hear something like this where I'm like, they took a space and then made it what they needed it to be, like, that is filmmaking to me. Like, I love it. And yes, the volume is cool and Pinewood Studios is cool, but there's just something to me that makes movies more magical when it's like a location that you can go see or like a place that is not what do you think it is when you're standing there and then you see it in the movie and you're like, oh my gosh, I recognize that. Like the whole Rogue One thing where they shot it in a train station, which they ultimately didn't l- use that stuff, but it's just the fact that you're like, I'm standing in a cinematic place. Yeah. Um, What do I think about it? I, th- I think it's cool. Uh, I- Again, going back to what we were just kind of talking about, I don't know how that, what that means, like the ramifications of what could come, especially with Yoda being there. I don't see Vader just leaving Yoda on that planet, especially... We know that he has all the Jedi being hunted down and stuff. So mm. I was like, why would they then leave? Why would he then be like, nah, Yoda's okay. Like, if you're going <laughs> to hunt down well, one Jedi, the, it would probably be that him, wouldn't you think? I, I agree with that point. The only thing that I think would be a cool parallel to that is how kind of like him and Palpatine kind of had a like st- stalemate. And right, like, right, right. Neither one killed the other one, but they kind of went their separate ways in a way. But or it could be I, you, like, that, that's a good you make a good point, though. That is a good point. Or it could be a scenario where he's just like, you know, you're so pathetic living here in a hut. Enjoy your life. Like this is ultimate punishment anyway. You know how they do that in movies where they're like, I'll or, leave you alone. And you're like, you why would like you leave messes, him alone? <laughs> or you like messes up Vader and Vader hightails it out of there or something. Yeah, you know? maybe. And then he's so embarrassed he wouldn't say that it was Yoda was there. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah. so many options. It's just one of those things that you're just like, I he want Yoda to He was 10 be- feet tall, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't tell anybody that he, was, he knows yeah. this whole time. Palpatine's like, we must find Yoda. He's like, I have no, no. I don't idea. know. I don't know. Yeah. What? I don't yeah, know. Coruscant. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What did you find on Dagobah? He's like a great warrior. <laughs> or it could be like I defeated him, but he really didn't. You know, I mean, there's so many yeah. ways you could write around it. It's just like a very interesting thing. But the idea that there could be a water scene and or Dagobah with Kenobi and Yoda is just, you know, that's what we all want. That's what we've been saying since they yeah. announced this project. So I'm really excited about it. And I hate to go too far on this because the the best spin bulletin thing was like, I'm not saying it's Dagobah. Please, everybody who's reporting this, do I'm not. I'm just saying because that's all I, I can think of. It's either that or Naboo with Well, this speaks back to what I was, <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, but it, it just goes back to like what I was pointing a, a while ago when I said it's we as fans tend to go, what could that mean? And we only like point Ray, to like the yeah. one or two things that we know, but we're literally talking about water. And possibly mm-hmm. 
misty water. So it's like literally we can't think of any other Ooh. options that that possibly could be. Like it could be any planet anywhere for any scenario at all, you know? Right. It's right. just kind oh, of one sure. of those things yeah. where where somebody said um, it's cool because like in a Star Wars context, they're like, it was kind of like Dagobah or something like, you know, with like the water and the smoke and stuff. And it was just, it was kind of neat to see. And it's like, okay, so that's kind of like an image you have. Don't report that it's Dagobah, but here we are. We're all talking about all the possibilities that could be Dagobah. I think it's because we want it so bad. <laughs> we I know. Want, yeah. We and want I, Yoda. We want Dagobah. We want Frank Oz. Yeah. Give, 100... give us everything. Yep. A hundred percent there. Um, <laughs> I, th I think it's interesting that they said the whole thing was surrounded by blue screens too, because water is like so reflective. I'm thinking like, I get it, but you know, whatever you replace that with is going to, you're going to have to replace all the blue that's bouncing well, everywhere off of the water. They did it with Ray in the last Jedi, the pool that she jumps into was oh, all, it's all blue, blue screen as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it probably is a little bit, I don't want to say it's easier, but it's probably easy for a big production to pull something like that off. Then I think sure. there's probably sure. some guy who's like, uh, it's not easy, <laughs> but we're right. getting paid big <laughs> money to do it. Right. Um, but I don't know. I, um, uh, yeah, I, I like the idea. If if it does end up being Dagobah, that would be cool. I mean, what a what a catalyst for the series, you know what I mean? Like understanding like Yoda's gonna be there, Obi Wan's gonna be there, Dark Qui -Gon, Vader's gonna be there. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's just Dagobah as they've described it is like this centrifuge for the force. You know, there are so many planets that kind of balance that thing. Like Mortis, for instance, is one of them. It's like right. the force seems to like suck into it and Dagobah yeah, being one of those planets you know you know what they could also you know being that this is a story that takes place before a lot of things that are established they can really reveal a lot of things in the trailer without it being like upsetting to fans like they can give us a chunk of vader they can even show us yoda if they wanted to i think the only thing that they should leave a surprise is qui-gon Qui even though yeah. i think we all assume it because we need to see him for the first time in the show we I want think. that moment yeah yeah, yeah and so whatever like, the surprise it, is like like they don't need to show us Baby Yoda. Well, you don't know Baby Yoda exists, you know. Right. So yeah, yeah, whatever, sure. if whatever the surprises surprise are, or yeah. they can still leave those in there. Like, leave I would out. be I mean, fine if they showed us a little Luke. I would be, I'd be totally cool if they showed us Yoda because we know Yoda's been talking with Obi Wan, so that's been happening. It's not like you know, it, it, there's this whole time gap. So I'd be I, pumped I, just I, to hear his voice and see the back of his head. Like to be honest, just to yeah, know. That so it's I think I yeah. think they could take a lot of liberties with this Obi Wan trailer. Uh, not necessarily the first teaser, but maybe the full trailer, and really make it something that is like really meat and potatoes, and not so much like these fan trailers where they show this like footage from this weird independent movie where Fluff. Ewan McGregor's walking in the desert for 90 yeah. seconds. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I, I'm looking forward to actually what they wind up doing with the Obi-Wan trailers, but I think because of the situation it's in in the timeline, fans understand it. I think you can take more liberties and, and worry less about keeping everything a secret while still having a couple of, uh, couple of aces up your sleeve for for the big reveals. Yeah. Right. I think, right. I think you might be overestimating what we're going to get though. As far as, you know, it's Disney, it's Star Wars. All they need to do oh, is remind I'm, people I'm saying, that it's coming. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> saying what they can do mm -hmm. and, and have some fun with it. I think Star Wars, like Lucasfilm and Disney need to have a little more fun with their canon Star I Wars. I mean, Marvel does it. crazy stuff with their trailers. Yeah, and, and oh, sure. like have a little bit of fun with your canon Star Wars in terms of marketing it the way you're having fun with your non-canon Star Wars stuff, James. Oh, <laughs> The non-canon Star Wars stuff? Like the Lego Star Wars terrifying tales? What? <laughs> Just like that! <laughs> Coming soon to a Disney Plus near you? Um, no, we want to move on to the next story, which is exactly that. The Lego Star Wars terrifying tales released it, uh, released a new official trailer. Uh, we had a poster before. It looked fun. We were excited about it. We got the holiday special. It was fun. We were excited about it. We all enjoyed it, I think. I don't think that received a lot of criticism at all so now heading to uh this year's halloween season they decided to do another one featuring poe dameron and vader's castle and all this and uh you know i don't i don't want to sit there and explain the trailer to you so i'll just jump back into it i'll start with you Lacey, on this one um you saw the trailer uh are mm -hmm. you as excited for this as you were about holiday special or more or less or what were your thoughts on this 
I think I'm super excited for this one based on how the holiday one was. Like the holiday one, I was like, oh, this is kind of cute. But then like, I really enjoyed it. And it was really comical and funny. And uh, we watched it together. So you can go to Patreon and see that. Uh, I don't know. Did we make that public? I don't think we did. I think it was a Patreon thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. um, It was just like a fun thing to watch. You know, these are meant for kids, just like regular Star Wars is. But I think even more with these because they've got that like kind of kitty humor to them um i was very surprised how much ben solo was in this trailer <laughs> that was a big yeah. shock to me i was uh-huh. like oh so they're saving ben solo for lego because they had him obviously <laughs> in the holiday special and then now they're having it i was like so this is what we're getting this is what you're feeding the ben solo fans with is uh-huh. the lego moments but um, other than that, it, it seemed really fun. You know, I know John likes the Poe Dameron voice guy. I'm not a big fan, but that's because I really want to hear the original actors. But I understand that people have lives and are busy and do other things. Some people just got to shoot Dune, you know? I know, and kiss uh, Jessica Chastain's arm and, like, just do amazing things in their life. Um, yeah, that was That was a little weird how, like widely accepted that was i know it's for like a bit to promote their show but i think they're both married as far as i understand it i think it was a adam's family joke from what i saw because the adam's family gomez does that too uh, that's a that's a yeah. good point wife. i think well, he was making she, a joke. she tweeted that she tweeted that photo of gomez and morticia yeah because i like know that a lot ones. of people wanted him to play gomez in an adam's family movie a uh, side note the adam's family movie that's out currently that has a sequel is complete and utter garbage. I, I, it's the worst animated thing I've Are you ever talking? seen. Oh, the animated one. I thought you meant the old one with like Christopher Lloyd and no, Raul the Julia one where and... Oscar Isaacs and Jessica Chastain are, uh, Gomez and Morticia. They, they have like a. It came out like sometime last year or something, and it was animated, it's just, right? It's just trash. Oh, they're already like Would literally. You say I'm it's like a this terrifyingly is bad tale. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's it's really <laughs> rough. I, I I couldn't. I was getting angry watching it. I was like, how did this get approved? And it's like star-studded <laughs> cast too. Like everybody who's in it, it's nuts. Anyway, <laughs> side note. It's bad. well, I can guarantee that this doesn't look that bad. This looks like no, a really fun great. time, and I like how they bring in Vader and Ben Solo, and I like the message behind it for kids, which is like you know, being afraid is part of life but it's how you handle being afraid and move forward that kind of thing so mm. i'm excited and i know that we'll probably do something for at least patreon where we watch this uh for you guys so definitely check that out um john do you also think the adams family movie is trash <laughs> so i didn't know about this animated one that came out oh really uh, yeah so yeah. maybe that's sir that that in and of itself is uh, commentary for because usually I'm, I'm pretty aware. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> go go watch the trailer after this episode and just be like, oh my wow. I was that, a, the, was that a movie? I remember really being into the uh the remake from 1990 when I was like a little kid. And oh yeah, Christopher Lloyd's as Fester and like Christina now Ricci they're doing a TV show. Those are fun. Tim Burton. Yeah, and uh, but anyway that um. This is is definitely cool. And Lacey's right. I do think the guy who does the voice for Poe Dameron is like frighteningly, 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 frighteningly. Spot, spot on. Yeah. <laughs> terrifyingly spot on. Uh, I thought like, really, I, I think he's very good. And I'm not surprised that they brought him back for this. I uh, love that Tony Hale uh, is is doing a voice in this one as Vinay. Oh, he's uh, so funny, assistant. but creepy. And also when I as soon as I heard Palpatine, I started laughing when I watched the trailer just because of the funniest moments in the holiday one were palpatine when he would say yeah. ridiculous things yes uh and uh they have kristen slater is voicing ren which i find is very interesting <laughs> um and i was looking up this grabala the hut this is like this construction he's, worker hut he's lego freemaker adventures canon okay yeah he's not in guy. real canon he's not a real character that's being portrayed here but he's a regular character in the Freemaker I just, Adventures. I mm-hmm. find it funny that we're always seeing huts, which are like slugs, in very dry places. Like, that doesn't <laughs> yeah. make a lot of sense to me. Why Jabba the Hutt's on a sand planet. It's also like a the, lava planet. Like, literally his, like, underbelly well, would probably just, like, 
That's what I mean. No, like, well, don't put them on cl- salt or uh, crate. <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that yeah, if you want to get away from the huts, you go build a hut, uh, literally build a hut on crate, and you're good to go. That's b- <laughs> hut proof. But like, I w- I'm surprised we don't see the huts like stationed on Camino somewhere, somewhere wet. Anyway. Um, yeah, this is fun. This looks cool. Uh, I'm very excited to see it. Definitely give me the, the reminder of those vibes I got when I watched the holiday special last year, which was surprisingly enjoyable. Um, and again, you know, we're in the midst of this thing here where the most, the, the most things Star Wars fans are talking about that are being released right now are all non-canon. And it's, 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 it's so, so interesting. It's so weird. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the anime show, the book that goes with the anime show, this. Is the what uh, if stuff for Marvel canon in the Marvel universe or no? no. Oh, no. no. It, that's the I whole thing. So. It's a hypothetical. Oh, okay. So, so then that makes sense. Well, so they're in the same situation then. I, or is it multiverse? I, look, I yeah, I, there's kind of this, this other thing that's saying like the way they explain what if in the Marvel thing is they're like, you know, hey, here's the first episode here's how here's where things changed and that split open the multiverse i haven't watched in another those, but... i gotta mul- watch them, in yeah. another universe this is how things went down and it's seemingly that that some of these events within the what if story are they're all in the same universe you know what's funny so like then... things things happen differently than what we're used to in the marvel thing but like these things these might all the what ifs might lead to something like an avengers kind of in their own regard over here and then it's theoretical that if they ever wanted to they could somehow they can pull cross, from it yeah they could pull from it or cross over i'm just say, saying it's funny yeah. that marvel fans and star wars fans are both getting these kind of hypothetical kind of not canon specifically but could be cool what do you think type things yeah i mean it's yeah i mean for for the star wars sake it's just a matter of being able to turn off your serious buttons and and just say like let's just have some fun with this and we're gonna throw a hut on mustafar and it doesn't matter but i this the whole multiverse thing like it the bubble hasn't even began to blow up yet Mm -hmm. and i already can sense it people getting tired of it in like a couple of years where they're just like, I don't want five Spider-Men. I don't want 12 Batman. And then the, it's going to get to the point where that bubble's going to burst. True. And people are going to look back on that era of this multiverse thing, which by the way is a fancy word for fan service nostalgia. That's all that is. <laughs> and, like Michael Keaton's 70 and he's coming back as Batman. And I'm so excited. For I'm it. so that's excited. To know. <laughs> so, so yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it makes no sense, but give it to me. I so, think, and I think we deserve mul- it. Okay. We I think the multiverse it. thing is going to, it's starting here. And when they, whenever they decide to wrap it up, they're going to close it. Like they closed the time travel stuff in, in sure, rebels. Yeah. They're gonna and like, they're going to be yeah. like, that's it. That was the, and then, we closed it. It's done. And then those movies are going to go back to a very traditional, like here's the hero. Here's your one mm-hmm. Batman and stuff like that. So, I've been wanting to see Shang-Chi so bad. Oh, I want to see that too. <sighs> I just can't um, get to the movie theater. But it's funny because all this Star Wars stuff's happening now, and like in three months we're gonna be in overdrive back in on on the Canon Highway, and yeah. it's gonna start with the Book of Boba Fett, and twenty twenty two is gonna just blast us off with all these new shows. So right, right. Uh, I, this is a nice little reprieve, uh, palate cleanser. Just have some fun. The anime stuff should be pretty cool. Uh, the Ronan book sounds like you know James. You could touch on this, obviously, uh, because you got yourself a nice little mm-hmm. juicy pre-copy of it. But um, it, it, I think this is the the right timing for them to do this sort of stuff, and I'm excited. When, when does this come out? The terrifying October first. Oh, October first. So we, what's today's date? The thirteenth. So yeah, we're a couple of weeks away. All right, very cool. Three it's weeks away. Kick it off. Well, no, yeah. Visions kicks it off, but then after that. Yeah, I think good. the the one thing that I really like about the terrifying tale thing is is the the Ren aspect because I know it's so not cool. canon. Yeah. But I I like the fact that they're including that character. It's just like a comic character and they're even it's not canon, but they're it feels like they're including these characters because they're it things that happened. You know what yeah. I mean? These are stories that are kind of like creepy and th- involved in the Star Wars world or whatever. And, um, and I like that for a lot of people, they don't know that character, you know, this, what they're like, yeah. like, it's one thing to, to say, let me tell you a spooky story about Darth Vader and when he 
killed some people or something. You know what I mean? You're like, <laughs> oh, I know who Darth Vader is and I know he's spooky and this is another tale. It may or right. may not be true. But it's just kind of interesting when like the spooky character in this case are are all new to a, a whole new group of fans that have no right. idea who they, they're like familiar with the Knights of Ren. But then they're like, what is this? Oh, and that's Ben Solo. Is that it? what what's the story here like what is this you know who are mm-hmm. these people are these like real people and have star wars fans be like oh yeah i mean this isn't canon but yeah those characters are you know th- this is kind of like how it went down you should read these comics and stuff i don't know it just kind of feels neat and opens up a door and um i don't know it just feels um like i said Canon, but not canon. Like loosely fun and canon and, and well, getting people involved. Also, you're a massive, massive Christian Slater fan, so this is Big really time. right up your alley. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to point him up in a lineup, but I, lo- I love him. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I don't know what he looks like. <laughs> Christian Slater? Come on, no. man. No, I. The name to me sounds like a a guy i mean i know who he was like big like in the 90s or 80s early 90s or 80s and 90s like that. yeah yeah but uh is okay am i crazy he's here? archer is, is he in he's been doing yeah, archer, but I, really. I don't, is he in top gun no no, no okay so he, he's know. the older brother in wizard or that game with the kid who wants to play the nintendo games nope heathers heathers he's like nope. the only guy in heathers nope Never Broken Arrow. <laughs> Broken Arrow. He plays the good guy in Broken Arrow. There you go. See, here's the thing. I've heard of that movie because I listened to a podcast on nuclear weapons, but I don't know anything about that movie. So that was that was the closest you've gotten what, what about, to me how about that even TV being show on aware USA, of something he's been the in. The TV show on USA, Mr. Robot with Malik or Rami Malik. Uh, I know I know of that show, but I don't know who he would be. He's the other guy. Well, the other guy. There's yeah. two guys. I think we're seeing a trend here, John. You He's can, father you robot. Kind of give it up. Come on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Christian Slater. I don't know who he is. Christian but Later. <laughs> Christian Later on this story. Now, <laughs> Star Wars Terrifying Tales coming October 1st. Uh, we're excited. Uh, we're going to look Christian forward Hater. to it. Christian Hater. Yeah. No, the other thing. Okay, let's just move into it, though, because the uh, Visions, we have another story here that a vision, that Star Wars Visions official poster has been revealed released um and i talked to you guys behind the scenes so maybe this is something that uh that we did all know but i was like is that confirmed or not but all nine episodes are in fact dropping at the same time yep i'm sorry Lindsay, (laughs) but it does say it on the poster that all the episodes (laughs) are coming at the same time um what what are your guys thought on thoughts on the poster i think Lacey should do one 10 minute video and do an intro and then one minute on each episode and do like a 10 minute video and cover it all. Oh, I actually did that for resistance. Oh yeah. I, we'll yeah, I watched every episode and, and put my reaction to every episode and then I just linked them all together and uh, published that's that. That's fun. I'll let Lacey uh, take the ball on this one to start. Yeah. Go for the post. What, what do you think about the poster? The poster's cool. Uh, it looks uh, like an anime, you know? It's It's got the kind of airbrush feel that a lot of those posters have um, that we've seen replicated, I think, in more kind of pop culture things like Star Wars and stuff. Um, I see a lot of lightsabers, which is cool. Different uh, droids. That droid looks like the one from the Jetsons. What's her name? Is it Ruby? Rosie. Uh, Rosie. 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 Voice, voiced by Christian Slater. <laughs> no it's not um but yeah i, know, I mean Rosie. this this doesn't tell me anything necessarily because only because anime is so different than anything mm-hmm. you'll ever watch because something that you're like completely are like oh i understand what this is it's not what you think it is um and the characters are so diverse and, and crazy and different um and this is coming from me spending a weekend watching like all the studio ghibli films that like are just out there in the best way. So I'm really hoping that's what I get from this series. Um, but yeah, the poster's cool. I love that they're doing it in Japanese because that's where these companies are based. So they should get the proper recognition of who is behind this project. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm excited. We'll see how it goes, but I- I'm pretty pumped. Um, I actually don't like the poster. I, I think 
I think I could like it, but I feel like they miss their proportions and there's way too much white on this. So it reminds me very much of like the Last Jedi posters that they had coming out where it was like very like yeah. one color. It, it's not my favorite. Like I anime, I've accepted that like they're kind uh-huh. of like, look at all these colors, look at all these characters, look at all this stuff. Because I, I like have the layout, the brush stroke and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just I, I think I think when I saw it, I thought That's it, it looked point. like a white poster with like there's a little bit of imagery like at the top, you know, and it's the thing. typical thing that they do now, which is like, let's collage all these heads together. Yeah, yeah. But it, that's also yeah, typically Star Wars, too. Yeah. Lacey definitely does have a lot of similarities with the main theatrical Last Jedi poster with the white ewing around the stuff. In the that's middle. what they went that, for with the Last Jedi was like kind of like mm-hmm. a japanese inspired look with the the strokes and what, everything what i find funny is and you're right Lacey. it it, uh, it is that typical like let's just throw every person's face in here that's the thing, thing but... now like give me something artistic there's so many talented illustrators and artists and but digital people they throw I it just, all together i just googled best anime posters and Compared to these that popped up in Google Images, <laughs> this poster seems subdued. Tame. I see, but that's uh, what I expect from anime. Is I expect I, those like, crazy, colorful, everything is there posters. Like, oh my god, they are busy in these I posters. I love it. Oh, I, love I it. know. Yeah. Okay. I see. I see what you mean. How, just in general, um, they. they the an- anime posters, just anime art in general, reminds me like y- you can almost see like somebody wearing like those button up Hawaiian shirts that are all anime and they just like it's like imagery everywhere. They're so loud. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I love um, it. No, I get that. I get that. This is definitely a subdued. It's clean. It feels like organized, yeah. polished, and they put everything together. I like that they did the the head collage thing because I think that had they made a really cool poster they could do, they could do maybe one that features i bet they're doing one for each one for each thing. story and those posters are, are going to be awesome yeah yeah i bet but, they are. but when you have to do it like this i think they're trying to say star wars visions here it is we're coming it, it's a you know a swipe or whatever and uh disney plus is the white i really or hope it's they just do. a taste of it or whatever yeah oh now i want that i want a poster for each of the episodes that'd be so sick yeah. and like It'd if be... they were done by different artists for each one or like each studio made their own poster you could yeah you could get like nine small versions of them and then Ugh. pin them up on the wall yep. you know frame them or whatever yeah I, like the poster is what it is i thought it was a little too white but i, I like the idea behind it i think like if may, maybe i might make my own version just like pull it up like a little bit more this would probably make good wallpaper though for a phone if you wanted to yes, yeah, get rid of some yeah. of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. There's some cool things there. Uh, but to, to get into all the stuff that's going on, I, this came out too, uh, The Edge of Balance. Um, I haven't started it yet, uh, but it is another High Republic story that also has a lot Super to do cool. with like uh, manga and that manga yeah. style. I'm spoiling things right now. Um <laughs> Yeah, technically, I think what I just did was illegal <laughs> for <laughs> taking images of it and posting it online. Now, um, but uh, but no, that is out Edge of Balance, and then uh, what John was alluding to earlier is the Ronin story as well. Uh, I have started that. I can't talk at all about it. Um, but what is interesting, and this is known information, that the first twenty five pages of the Ronin novel is a recapping of the event that happens in Star Wars Visions. So having started this book, I now know exactly how that story plays out. One of nine different stories. Right. And what is uh, what is interesting, too, is rewatching the trailer and being like, oh, yep, that. Oh, 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 yeah, that. Oh, so that's that. Okay, okay. I can yeah. piece it all together now. Um, and take screenshots and just like look at them and be like, okay, I really have a good idea of who these characters are and, um, and how they fit into things and stuff. So, uh, I don't know. It's kind of interesting now. Cause I feel like I've seen it without having seen it. It's not even out, but yeah, right. I well, know, I know a little bit more about like the core of it and I can, it's almost like remembering are you doing it. A book review I, for that? Uh, I don't think we, oh, I think, oh yeah, we, sorry. Book discussions. Yes. Not for oh. edge of balance. Um, no, no, yeah. because we're considering that a comic, I guess. But um, 
what what's going to be interesting is to see how visions performs on disney plus because it's a star wars show uh clearly with international um interest involved here so and like we've said and it's been well known for decades star wars has just really struggled pulling in the international audience so i'm curious on a platform like disney plus which is clearly been a big hit for star wars already with the mandalorian we're expecting big things probably out of the book of boba fett i would say the mandalorian's done better over there than the star wars movies yeah i mean it's doing yeah it's doing well and i know all the other uh all the other stuff in disney plus is doing really well they overshot their subscriber counts I'm curious to see what something like this does mm. um, in in relation to, you know, maybe other anime projects and see if that's something that could maybe lure people into Star Wars in the back door. No canon, maybe they're like, looking come on to in, branch check into it that out. Anime. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, I know they've been trying to figure out ways to, to get into the international audience. And so far, <laughs> it's it funny, too, because it, it's always very clear when they're doing it. They're like, let's yes, release yeah. this manga yeah. that's exclusive. Let's let's release right. this. Um, <laughs> What's the other one? Oh, there's a Chinese exclusive High Republic book. Yeah. It's just yep. like, I, I, don't, I actually don't even know if that's something that we're going to get in America, like a translation at all. Right, right. And they have their first main Asian protagonist with Kaz in uh, Resistance. Like, they're making efforts to, to, mm-hmm. to do that it. That seems um, more subdued, though. Like, if that was an attempt to kind of bring in a specific demographic or something, I, I, I would be like, oh, okay. anime is very specific to... Yeah, yeah. this, like, Visions More itself niche, is yeah. like, it seems like... That's Come on, culture. guys, like, yeah. we're, really, we're really trying here. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree. So, um, but a lot of those things just seem like so obvious attempts, but... Uh, but no, yeah. I, I actually applaud the cast thing. I mean, that's that seems... That just seems like you just had a character, you know, involved in yeah. the show. Doesn't have anything to do with anything. Um, one more thing that we wanted to talk about this week, uh, just cause it's a little spot of news is there was a, uh, image that was tweeted by a, uh, Spanish, uh, the Spain Disney plus account. It's uh, always an international. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know exactly what, what was going on here, but, um, they tweeted a schedule of all the things that are coming to Disney plus. And on September 9th, they had something called the Star Wars Galaxy of Sounds. And it's a series of shorts because uh, they said there was multiple episodes, uh, seven episodes, I believe, uh, right. coming right. Um, on that date. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, and we can talk a little bit about what we think that might be. But it's probably I wouldn't get your hopes up too greatly that it's some seven part documentary I think it's an ambiance like, thing. gallery i think it's ambiance they're gonna play a scene you're gonna hear the sounds and in, in different things at dagobah yep and then... so very yeah very similar to the biomes and yeah. um mm-hmm. the other one where they were going where they were cruising through the ships which really was just kind of like hey we made these really cool 3d models and we kind of just move a camera through them yeah because i know <laughs> you john you had mentioned out. off air that you thought maybe it might be something where they go into the sounds but the the idea that it's a series of shorts to me makes it seem like this might be something that you just put on your like experience the sounds of the cantina yeah <laughs> i wonder if these like you know we're just talking about the international audience for star wars that these international accounts are like no one's watching anyway so let's just leak everything. <laughs> I don't think so. I think I think probably. I'm kidding. Yeah, I I don't know why. Uh, you know, it it, it uh, maybe I'll ask you guys. What do you think? Is there any chance that maybe this is the Spanish schedule that they get it at that time and we're getting it at a different time? Nah. No, you think it's all just dropping at the same time? I think it's all dropping at the same follow. time. I think that the marketing person over there thought they were being ahead of schedule by putting this out early for fans, not realizing that they were putting it out before the America side, because North America runs its own schedule. And I know from working on Celebration that you have to like kind of work with the different accounts in different areas. But I saw this as they put out their schedule for the month, thinking they were being probably helpful to viewers. And someone, someone were someone somewhere was like, "Hey, can you take that down?" It hasn't yeah. been announced yet. Which uh, it's going to be just complete a complete side deal note. We were talking about this off air as well. There's a lot of Hitler content coming to Disney Plus. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I was very. Yeah. I was like, no Star Wars, but give me all the Hitler. But like, who, but it's like, it's like, who cares? Like, what, if they were like, if they release the schedule and they're like, Obi Wan Kenobi's coming out on June fourteenth, right? Be like, it's just a date. Sweet. Yeah, it's just a date. Sweet. Yeah, I don't get it. But, but it, because because they don't tell us these things, we overreact when we get them. And then they're so like, yeah. oh god. So it they, is funny because like, if friggin' Bob, what's the new Bob's name? Chappic. Chappic. Bob Chappic comes out there and he's like. Andor, Valentine's Day, Obi Wan Kenobi, June fourteenth. <laughs> yeah, guess what? Ahsoka, March twenty third, twenty twenty three, and we're just like, all right, we got all the dates. Cool, nice. Yeah, great, <laughs> wonderful. Instead, now it's like, oh, don't, don't, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. We want them to watch when it comes out, but just don't. don't Secret don't, of don't Galaxy tell. of yeah. Sounds. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know this this Disney Plus, the social or whatever. They just had everything together, and they're like, when September first hits, we're going to release the calendar they of all the things it, coming yeah. in September. It's not. Yep. A, it's well, let's not, not even forget it. Some Disney Plus pe- people have been known for having some loose lips around the, around <laughs> the Star Wars fandom. So, oh, that's true. Gonna <laughs> tighten up the vault a little bit. <laughs> Could you see this making its way up the Disney the... vault with all the VHSs and the Star Wars leaks and all the Star Wars leaks? Yeah, <laughs> you, uh, your copy of Bedknobs and Broomsticks and your latest rumors <laughs> about the Ahsoka series. Disney yeah, vault. Could you, do you guys remember Could those you... commercials coming out of the Disney vault for a short? Period yeah, I remember of time. that guy's yeah, voice like clearly in my head. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this 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 like leak, if you will, this information got out ahead of North America and it making it all the way up the ladder, and every and everybody at the top is like, "Oh my God, I do not care." Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> what yeah. does it yeah. matter that that right. now StarWarsNewsNet.com is reporting this? <laughs> like, you know, who? Uh, whatever. Um, no, it's uh, uh that's it though for the week of Star Wars news. Um, Lacey, what's in our next section? That's it. All right, guys, it's time for the Patreon pod race. So there are lots of ways you can support us. You can like this uh, video, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications here on YouTube. You can follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N or on Instagram at The Resistance Broadcast. Or if you want more than that, including extra content, like videos, mailings, Discord server, and more, you can head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast starting at $2 a month. That's it. $2. You get extra content for the entire month, uh, which is really cool with everything that's ramping up in the coming months, like visions and this Halloween stuff and Book of Boba Fett. You're definitely going to want to subscribe now. Because you can get all that cool stuff and book discussions and much more. I'm sure there's other stuff that we don't even know about, like we were just saying, (laughs) that's on the way. So this is the part of the show where we let our generals and spice runners be a part of the show by asking them a question. So first, I want to thank them. So thank you to our generals, Carmelo, Andrew Staley, Jeremy Myers, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Paul Olson, Jake Houchins, Oliver Lewis, Frank Grande, Hass, Joe Ritchie, Darth Hurricane, John Trollton, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, and Val Trichkoff. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you to our Spice Runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C Chris, Kendall Gellner, Ryan Wara, Dave Horneck, Mike Harrison, and new Spice Runner, Thomas Hennessy. Thank you guys oh, so much. We're excited you. to have you in the community. So this week, we're rotating to a new general, which is always exciting to get someone new on the show. And it's Joe Ritchie. Joe, what up? How's it going? Hello. Joe! <laughs> So, uh, Joe got the question of, if you had to show somebody who has never seen Star Wars one scene to explain to them, this is Han Solo, what scene would you show them and why? Joe, take it away. Hey all, I was asked to introduce Han to someone who has never seen Star Wars before. Really difficult decision to make. He's been in so many iconic scenes throughout the years in the, uh, the various movies. As a father of three sons who don't always make the right decisions, I went with The Force Awakens. The confrontation between Han and Ben on the scaffolding was the perfect choice for me. Whether your son fails at an exam or is involved in the killing of millions of people in the Hosnian system, they can always come home. Thanks, guys. Hashtag make Solo 2 happen. Bye. Good job, Joe. I know you were nervous, but you killed it. You did a great job. John, what'd you think? 
and I would never have thought to pick that scene. Yeah. Um, but uh, then when he explained it, uh, I was like, oh, that's way more sentimental than I thought he was going for. So um, I thought that was a really good pick because honestly, I would have probably run through 10 scenes. I would have done a Kessel run on it and not mm-hmm. gotten to that one. So uh, great job, Joe. I thought you did an awesome job for your first pod race. Uh, you look crystal clear. You sounded great. And you surprised me. So a great pick. And now I can uh, see that as uh, something that I wouldn't have originally thought of. And that's what this is all about sometimes. So uh, great job. Great shirt. I saw the very top of it. You're wearing our Never, Never Tell Us The Odds Makes It All Too Happen shirt. So uh, hell yeah, man. Hashtag Makes It All Too Happen. Can't wait for your next pod race. Thanks, buddy. Mm-hmm. James? No, the, um, like John was saying with the explanation, it makes a lot of sense. But it also just makes sense in general when you think about how this character was introduced to us and we had all these scenes um this being a scene that they shot and explained at the end of han solo's life after we've gotten all those other scenes you know we even got stuff from solo uh you know th- we've had han solo in our life for so long that when they're writing the script when they're coming up with this un- understanding of what is han solo like at the end of his life um, it's it's these scenes and these decisions that encapsulate his his whole existence, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think even though you had this this one reason for it, I think you subtly um, opened up this concept of of what they were doing when they were writing those scenes, as they were saying, like, what is the core of Han Solo? Let's bring it out. Let's bring out his entire life and his entire existence in these scenes, and. Uh, they they nailed it. You nailed it. It was great, man. Thanks, General Joe Ritchie. By the way, which scene would you guys pick? Probably this one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, because I would cause... definitely pick Han Solo TFA the Wrath Tar scene, like the entirety of that sequence, from the moment that they show up to him punching that dude in the face. To them, him being like, I this is not how I thought today was gonna go. Like to me, that's just like so pure Han Solo, and it's obviously written by Lawrence Kasdan, so it's um, like it just breathes that into it based on what we know of him. I'd have to go with the whole scene leading up to and into the asteroid chase in Empire Strikes Back because he's just like Fair. doing things on a whim, and he's like, shut him up or shut him down. He's flipping switches, <laughs> yeah, and he's yeah. like, settle down, sweetheart. And then he flies into the asteroid field and somehow gets through it without thinking he would. And yeah, that yeah. to me is. The most fly by the fly by the seat of your pants Han Solo thing to do. Yeah. James. Gosh, man. This actually it, might be a good cast run if we start doing like character scenes that we think yeah. are like the top twelve scenes for this character. Good yeah, that's, that, yeah, that's good. I don't know. I'm trying to think um kind of similar into the same vein that we were talking about as far as like this is the end of his his life kind of thing, but mm-hmm. also like when from creating it a standpoint. So it makes me think solo because while that was early right. in his life, that was it was still like showing us like they're trying to convince us like this movie, this is Han Solo. You guys know Han Solo from the original trilogy? This is him. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of Han Solo-isms in that movie. And so, I don't know, one off the top of my head might be um, the final scene with him and Lando. Like, right. him showing up. Yes. Ah, might be a good buy-in. Like, pulling the card, all that. And then, like, you know... Yeah, it's uh, perfect. You're right. What, what's the matter? And he, then he throws it down if you had this and all that and flying away. I just, that a lot a of that one. seems so... Except for the music there. Really? No, just that's just at the end. <laughs> that is not part of the scene. He does this and then that scene ends and then they show the dice for some reason. I love that we've been doing this for so long that we know certain things that just, oh. just irk us. Like, obviously, helicopter shot in TFA. Like, we just know the certain Wait, things. Wait, let me that... get closer for James. <laughs> it's like it's like musically like one two three four five. You know what? You one, should have three. You four, should have asked two, uh, John Powell about that. I think I think it was on like a short list that I was like, mm, I don't know. I don't why know. Why is the ending so bad, John? Powell? Yeah. Why did Why did this Why Why was this choice made? Because I'm notably someone who does not like it. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> anyway joe you did a great job uh i agree that this scene is definitely emotional and in highlights 
Han Solo and the best way of being not just himself, but also father. So I can see how that connects with you. Um, but yeah. yeah, great job. I know you were nervous. You did awesome. So we yeah. hope to see you back into the pod race again soon. And now we're going to head back to John. All right. So, um, yeah, we don't have too much time. We're actually um, approaching an hour now. But yep. uh, there were more Hasbro reveals, obviously, last week. Um, so did you have any that stood out to you, obviously, besides the Ray Force Effects lightsaber that you would buy or that you think look the coolest? Uh, maybe one or two, Lacey? Well, the ones everyone was pretty excited about was the black series six inch princess leia organa yavin four figure that comes yeah, with the like metal people are pretty pumped about that and then obviously the mandalorian grogu kind of mud deco figure from chapter two where yeah. he goes and tries to defeat the mud horn and then realizes grogu has the force and the grogu figure has his eyes closed with his arm out which is funny because last week we had an episode where we talked about grogu specifically is the merchandise done? And I specifically said, I think they've made enough action figures of Grogu. Like, what else could they do? And literally the next week, they announced this one where he has his <laughs> eyes closed and his arm out. So I kind of ate that. But uh, other than that, they had a lot of uh, troopers per usual. They had a gaming, ga a gr eh, gaming greats jet trooper they had the kind of world building set of stormtroopers that you get like four or five of them in a box which is cool because i know a lot of people like set up little dioramas and stuff that's true um a bunch of vict uh vintage collection of mandalorian figures which are a lot of repaints and and re like the same molds just what they do a lot um and then they had a credit collection which they've done previously with the first season of Mandalorian. They're doing it again. Uh, the pipeline reveals are pretty cool. They have Palpatine coming back. Uh, Lando from Return of the Jedi with his little uh, disguise that uh, Beckett wears when he's Tool. <laughs> was, the, was the Leia lightsaber known? Leia lightsaber is in the pipeline reveal. So yeah. they're doing a force effects of leia's lightsaber from the rise of skywalker as well which is like kind of like rose gold one which is really cool that was one of the last things they announced and they announced dengar i believe as a pipeline reveal as well as yoda 501st clone trooper mandalorian death watch airborne trooper and wow. figrin don i'll say this i mean i'm not a big collector anymore this is a little bit of a nitpick i think a lot of this stuff does look really cool yeah the palpatine like it's one of reason, the most requested things. But like his face, I know he's in like the yelling mode. Th mm -hmm. They've had a very hard time, even in makeup, replicating his Return of the Jedi look for mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is. Artists do a good job of it, but they can't get it in figures. I even feel like when they tried to replicate it on screen, it, they weren't able to fully capture it. I don't know why. Like, it's just something about it that I felt like he never looked better than he looked in Return of the Jedi. And it was so funny because Ian McDiarmid was like 34 when he did it at the time. I but was very anyway. surprised they didn't announce the Rancor stuff yet. Yeah. But I'm assuming they're saving that for Hascon, which is October 22nd to the 23rd. So I'm sure they'll share more what stuff about, there. But I was just yeah, over but the why, moon. Why wait and just do it at BroCon? <laughs> what? There's PulseCon, Hascon, BroCon. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but anyway i'm super pumped for the ray lightsaber and i'm sure you guys are too uh and now i have to figure out something else to bother them about probably ben solo figures oh keep geez. that going I, somewhere um, somewhere hasbro people went oh no yeah james I, you <laughs> you buying any of this stuff you into any of this stuff uh i mean i kind of like some of these mandalorian figures which i don't actually know like what these are i don't know what they're trying to do with them uh, if they're supposed to be like flashback to some older time or something but i think what's interesting with them is they kind of remind me of those like 90s um 90s toys where they like kind of just change the colors around and it feels like oh the retro prototype ones I forgot to mention those. Is that are what you're talking prototype? about? Are they prototype? Is that what they are? I mean, so they I... call them a prototype where each uh, <clears throat> like limb is a different color. Are Maybe. you talking about the stormtroopers or are you talking about vintage Klaxon? No, I'm talking about like the Mandalorian, oh. Grief Karga, Moff Gideon. Yeah, those are vintage Klaxon collection. I was talking about the stormtrooper ones. They're mm -hmm. releasing prototype ones again that have different 
uh, limbs. So the thing is, like, you want to collect each one because each one has a different color scheme. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I mean, I saw someone online talking about how expensive collecting has gotten. And I agree. Like, it's just you got to pick and choose what you want. It's tough. And it's tough to get stuff, especially online nowadays. So fingers crossed that everybody gets what they want. (laughs) These these just look to me like they're kind of like their alter egos or their right. bizarro versions or something Repaints, like that. Because yeah. Multiverse. You got, yeah, you got this Mandalorian <laughs> with like a blue helmet and a blue cape and it's just like, and he's got like blue and purple like yeah, right. wristbands. And sure. it's like, oh, that's that's different and interesting and I don't know what universe that comes from, but like like I said, it reminds me of the like 90s toys where they would like repaint them a different color and be like, yeah, oh, yeah, this yeah. is Ice Batman or something like that. <laughs> Yeah. I always hated those because they weren't like real. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Maybe that's why I'm not into the multiverse thing. I don't know. But <laughs> like they would release an orange Batman. I'd be like, oh, Batman would never wear orange. Anyway, he I would can't if wait. he was solar magma Batman. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. He was on Mustafar. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get the Ray Saber and unbox it for you guys. So awesome. hopefully that happens sooner rather than later because they said it's supposed to hit shelves in 2022. So I'm hoping that doesn't mean the pre order happens and then I have to wait six months. But. We'll yeah, I think I read in May, May. I think right before celebration, maybe. Um, yeah, it, it all right. may be in May. <laughs> and on With that note, solar we, Batman. <laughs> yeah. Same pre-order dates. Um, all right, we 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 got to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> thank you to everybody for listening and watching and being a part of TRB. Like Lacey said, make sure you subscribe to the show. That is very important because we're with you twice a week. And as more stuff comes out at the end of this year and next year, we'll be doing a lot more stuff on the channel and on the podcast feeds. So subscribe on your preferred audio platform as well. Uh, make sure you go to Star Wars News Net. All the Star Wars news articles that we went through today, you can find at StarWarsNewsNet.com. It's true. Uh, your favorite source for Star Wars news, but also editorials, reviews. We have a great team over there, um, including um, my counterparts here who uh, help out as well. Um, what else we got here? Uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and writing and editing at StarWarsNewsNet.com. And uh, my movie podcast called Just Like the Movies, available on all audio podcast platforms. James? Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. Lacey? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin. And thanks again Thank- for tagging me and stuff, guys. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. While well, you were snoozed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody's I, yeah. like, Lacey's gonna freak out on this. <laughs> Cut to Lacey. Then why isn't like, she responding to my tweet? <laughs> Can I tell she you? She must what? have me I, muted. I must be muted by Lacey I, Gillard. I woke up and I was just like, what? <laughs> And then I get a message from John being like, Lacey, did you do this? And I was like, oh, no. And then I go online and it's like all these replies and tags. And I was like, the the one day that I had like didn't feel well is the day that they were like, today's the day. Lacey's going to be so excited. Yeah. I remember (laughs) as a kid, I got I got like a stomach flu on Christmas and only Christmas. (laughs) Yes, right. It reminded (laughs) me of you today because I was like, of all days to be like really sick. It's like the one day that Hasbro decides to announce the thing she's been talking about. I wonder if like even their team, because they know me from talking to them, were like, Lacey's going to be so excited. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, slay it (laughs) off. I, I hope I don't have a fever the day they re-release Ecto Cooler back into the world. Well, it's literally like, no bad. joke. It's like if you slept through Disney Investor Day or Disney Plus Day, John, and they announced oh, sure. Make Solo 2 happen and you were lying out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I have muted everybody. And we're, we're texting you like, John. <laughs> Twitter has just a mute all feature. So no, I didn't mute you. I'm literally, I was just <laughs> dead. Kind of. Um, so Thursday, I kind of teased it before, but we're going to have a little bit of a one if, what if fun. Uh, like I said, we're going to if if Yoda and Vader faced off in a lightsaber duel, how would that go? So we're going to explore that and what our thoughts are on that and more fun, of course, right here on the Resistance broadcast. So till next time, we'll see you around, kids.